Welcome back to CES 2010, and uh, we're with DTS. Now it's been uh, it's been quite a good year this past 12 months for DTS. Uh, we're looking at Blu-ray. Blu-ray is being adopted more and more. So, um, Master Audio, maybe you can explain uh, what the technology is and how many titles are now out there. With the... uh, there's now thousands of uh, titles in Master Audio. We're very excited about uh, the proliferation of Blu-ray and how it's been accepted by consumers. And I think one of the key components of Blu-ray overall is, is, is the ability to deliver audio at a completely different level and really highlight how important audio is for the overall movie experience. And in terms of acceptance of master audio versus the other alternatives, uh, I think we're, we're now, as being part of the standard, are able to deliver D2S to the majority of the titles. And I think this year we have several really exciting uh, events like Watchmen, uh, Twilight, uh, and others that have been released exclusively in Master Audio as the format for Blu-ray. Now there's uh, lots of people out there will, will see the two audio formats, competing audio formats. Why, why should they select Master Audio on the options? Uh, I think that uh, when you listen to people that are listening compared to the various formats, I think consistently, even since the DVD days, DTS has been recognized as the premium format. Uh, in terms of uh, delivering a discrete experience, whether it's, it's uh, completely uncompressed losses or uh, it's, uh, it's compressed uh, as, as a digital uh, surround format as well. Now, it's not only surround formats um, on Blu-ray disc that you do, so we're going to have a look around the stand and see what else you have. So, Gear, um, DTS Neural Surrounds, it's on uh, a, a lot of AV receivers that are out in the mass market at the moment, but people maybe see the logo and don't understand what the technology is. So what is DTS Neural? So DTS Neural is a format that enables uh, content owners to distribute surround sound over stereo. This has great benefit for broadcast as well as other digital media uh, deliver, delivery mechanisms that they may have constraints. Online gaming is an example, as well as internet streaming or other kind of media delivery over internet. So essentially what it does, it takes the surround sound encoding and it encodes the surround elements into a stereo stream that's 100% compatible with traditional stereo. So then when it hits the neural, DTS neural enabled receiver, it'll then take these elements in the stereo stream and recreate the surround sound as uh, it was encoded as original. So I guess what you're talking about is something like a broadcast channel where they want to save on bandwidth, they will mix in 5.1, put it into the stereo track, encode it neural, and then at the other end it un unpackages that into 5.1 again? Yeah, I think, I think uh, bandwidth constraints is one issue. I think also uh, content creations where there's a lot of uh, real-time imaging created like sports broadcasts with their fade-ins and highlights that are put together into, into a stream where people are working on media stations that don't support surround sound in real time. It's also a great benefit to being able to carry a surround mix throughout that workflow and then at the end be able to uh, upmix it or decode it uh, in its full glory as a surround sound entertainment experience. And is this technology now on all receivers that are released? Uh, I would say uh, rele receivers above a certain price point generally supports it. And uh, DTS, we probably have a relationship with essentially all AV manufacturers. Uh, so it's proliferating. Uh, granted, it's a new technology. I would say that the, the stereo stream itself is also uh, compatible with uh, with the legacy systems. So if you have a DTS Neo decoder from before, you can you can decode uh, and have a reasonable, uh, great experience. Now, how does the consumer know that the two-channel uh, audio that they have coming into their system is neural encoded? That may vary from uh, from format to format. A HD radio, which we're showcasing here on the show, also in an automotive implementation. Um, will have a, a, a metadata tag that enables the receiver to know that this is a neural encoded signal, so that's one way. And I understand that ESPN in the States use Neuro for their sports broadcasts. We get ESPN in the UK, so is it safe to assume that ESPN coverage will be encoded that way? If the program is orig originated from the United States or a US event, yes, that is correct. It, it, it would then be encoded because all venues of DTS, of, uh, all venues on ESPN supports the neural DTS format. So uh, another technology um, which might eventually come to the UK under Virgin Media's uh, broadband and cable system um, is the broadcast systems that you have here in the set-top boxes. Now, maybe you can explain what's different about these set-top boxes and, and 
why is DTS involved with it? Well, I think what we're seeing is that uh, uh, home media entertainment is evolving and uh, telcos as well as satellite providers and cable networks are starting to, to have a much higher bandwidth. We see demand for uh, this show, we even have announcements for 3D networks from our partner at ESPN. We see uh, HD 1080p uh, video uh, broadcasting over, over HD channels for satellite and cable delivery. And as this fiber networks uh, devolve, there's a, there's a demand for a better audio experience as well. So what we have uh, developed uh, is our digital surround technology, which is 1.5 megabit uh, discrete encoded audio that being distributed to set-top boxes to then have a digital bitstream out that is compatible with all legacy DTS digital surround systems which enables broadcasters to deliver a Blu-ray-like experience, not just with the video, but also having a uh, DTS surround um, audio performance. So we, we don't have any details on the UK at the moment, but I understand something's happening in France at the minute? Uh, there's actually, in, uh, what we have, uh, I, I can't really comment on the, on the European countries at this point, but uh, I would say uh, right next door is the, uh, uh, Extreme HD, which is a uh, high-end cable uh, satellite provider of, of, of movie content. They exclusively use DTS as their format for audio. And I think as others uh, trying to differentiate services like video on demand or asking the consumer to actually pay for the movie when they uh, enjoy it off their, off their TV service, uh, differentiated features such as digital surround is really, really important in order to give the consumer an extra value. As we're rolling out, and I think what we see at the show from DTS perspective is an expansion, not just Blu-ray, but what we've been proven in Blu-ray being a premium audio brand, proliferating that through broadcasting, PCs, uh, others, other services. And I think uh, regardless of how the consumer enjoys the media, we want to make sure that the audio stands out and really pops so that uh, we can deliver the emotion and the excitement or whatever um, content they're enjoying. Well, Gail, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. It's excellent to see you and have a good show. Yeah, you too. Thanks.